Hello, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. So ever since the spread of the coronavirus pandemic, starting with the first cases in Wuhan in 2020, new variants, new mutational forms have propped up in various parts of the globe. And they have been named by scientists because of their lineages and their phylogenetic and evolutionary relationships. They have been named as with cryptic names like P1 and B1351 and B1617, denoting different lineages, which is fine for you know scientific nomenclature. But I think for public, it is really cumbersome. And what has indeed turned out to be is that people are referring to these variants by the name of the countries that they have first been detected in. And that has led to a lot of stereotyping as well as many racist remarks on social media as well as by different politicians. So it has created quite a storm. So WHO has now released a new nomenclature system for the different variants of SARS coronavirus and that's what we are going to discuss today. Now, as I said, different variants of coronavirus which have different infectivities as well as different effectiveness in how they are you know, effective in transmitting the disease as well as different effects on different patients, they are, have been classified into different types, different variants. So these are different mutational forms of the same virus and these as you can see from this genome map. Here is the genome map of SARS coronavirus. It is an RNA virus. So here you are looking at the RNA genome of the complete virus. This is 30,000 nucleotides or, nucle or nitrogenous bases. And these are different predicted proteins. ORF1A, 1B, spike protein. That is the infamous protein which latches on to the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor in the lung cells and in other tissues causing extensive damage and there are multiple other mutations. So these are the different variant forms that have been identified. These are variants of concern so they have been labeled as potentially very dangerous and scientists are tracking them intensively. So B117 it was first isolated in UK. B1351 was first isolated in South Africa, P1 first isolated in Brazil, B1525 it has been detected in multiple countries almost simultaneously and B1617 was first identified in India. Now the problem with such origins is that now they are not restricted to these countries because of the global travel as well as transmission of coronavirus and as I said in my prelude to the video it has led to a lot of political controversies and stigmatization. For example ex-US President Donald Trump made a lot of you know controversy when he tweeted about the Chinese virus. He kept referring to the coronavirus as the Chinese virus, we will deal with the Chinese virus, we will annihilate the Chinese virus and this was creating a lot of unnecessary stereotyping and possibly it also led to anti-Asian racism and racist attacks in US because people started stigmatizing Chinese people and people of Asian origin as if they were the carriers of the China virus or the Corona virus. So calling coronavirus as Chinese virus is totally unacceptable. You know, it creates unnecessary divisions in the society and leads to more racism as well as stereotyping of people. Similarly, Indian IT ministry also, you know, cracked down on social media platforms when several uh, people, several users refer to the Indian variant as the Indian variant B1617 instead of saying it is B1617, they just say, okay, it is the Indian variant. So I think World Health Organization has realized that, you know, it is causing unnecessary controversy at this necessary time when all countries need to come together and solve this pandemic for everybody, regardless of where a particular variant has emerged or was detected first. So they have come up with a neutral kind of terminology for all the different variants, especially the variants of concern as well as the lower level variants of interest that they are monitoring that they may not accumulate more mutations and they have released 10 different names based on the Greek alphabet for different variants. 
So this was announced on 31st of May 2021. So what is a variant of concern? Just a little background. Variant of concern is the highest level of variant, uh, you know, kind of a danger signal that WHO has currently. A variant of concern has increased in either transmissibility or detrimental, so harmful change in COVID-19 epidemiology. So it leads to either worse symptoms or exacerbation of symptoms. Increase in virulence or change in clinical disease presentation. So some change in symptoms, some worsening of symptoms and decrease in effectiveness of public health and social measures or available diagnostics, vaccines, therapeutics. So it may escape the immune system. It may escape vaccines, although thankfully many vaccines that are currently available, they have been able to tackle these variants. But if it is not curbed soon, you know, things could go out of hand. So variants of concern are really you know, the most dangerous variants that are circulating in human populations right now. So these are the new nomenclatures. Okay, so B117, which was previously identified in UK. Okay, so people called it UK variant or Kent variant. Now it is the alpha. Okay, the WHO label is alpha. Similarly, the B1351 variant is beta. T1 variant is gamma and B16172 is delta. I would also like to mention there are three major agencies that are tracking these lineages. One is the Pango uh, lineage tracking agency derived from Pangolin. So this is extensively tracking the various lineages and the various variants. So it is an international group of scientists. Another is GSI, GIS aid, GIS aid. Okay. And another is next strain. So these three organizations are extensively sequencing lots of samples as well as tracking different patients and finding out which variants they are containing. So they have agreed upon this label. Now variant of interest is a little bit on the lower rank of you know the danger signal but still it is a variant of interest and it is actively monitored by WHO. So variant of interest has been identified to cause community transmission or multiple COVID-19 cases or clusters or has been detected in multiple countries. So it has a high, probably high degree of transmission. It is otherwise assessed to be a variant of interest by WHO in consultation with the Virus Evolution Working Group. So this is another group of scientists who are working on tracking this variant of interest and they are looking at the potential effects of different mutations that these variants have. So here are the six variants of interest currently. B1427 or 429, it is labeled as Epsilon. P2 variant, Zeta. B1525, Eta. P3, detected in Philippines first, Theta. B1526 as Iota. And B16171 is Kappa. So remember that B16172 was Delta. So Delta and Kappa are the new names of the India variant. So it is not acceptable to use the Indian variant or the UK variant or the you know Brazil variants for these in the common language. So journalists should be especially wary and especially careful about not using the earlier you know country specific labels and using these new WHO recommended labels because it will just create uh, you know better understanding, better focus on the spread of the disease and curbing the disease instead of you know unnecessary politics and racial bias. Another point that I would like to mention is that the scientists will still keep continuing to use these P2, B1525 lineages in their academic research papers. So you will not find the Epsilon, Zeta, Eta in the scientific literature. This is more for the common print as well as you know the electronic media as well as in common parlance to refer to these variants but definitely the you know brazil or the uk variants are definitely out so those names are out okay so that was my discussion of the who's new nomenclature for covid 19 variants okay hope you like this discussion if you have any doubts comments or questions please let me know thank you for watching and i'll see you next time